Deckard6 here, and welcome back to Empire of the Sands. It's been a little while since my last play session. I've played through an entire game of Common Sense since then to get a feel of how the progression's going to go as the game goes on, so I think that's going to prepare me for this. Leaving off last time, uh, Hejaz just started a silly and pointless war that they have no intention of prosecuting themselves against Ethiopia. If last time's any indicator, I'm going to have Ethiopian troops raiding my African holdings, and it's going to be frustrating, and... Er, I, I want them to just peace out in a draw as soon as possible. I mean, if I, even if they release Yemen, that actually comes out better for me, because then they'll probably accept vassalization, and I can stop their independent and counterproductive foreign policy. I'm planning on attacking Timurids while they're looking like they're fragmenting. I did a little look at their alliances. They have a whole lot of vassals that aren't really that big. Uh, Multan, Kashmir, Logdok. Multan, Kashmir. Yeah, really tiny ones. I mean, they're moving in the right direction. If I were them, I'd be moving in to perform the Mughals by just slowly moving to Africa and giving up on Persia for the time being. <clears throat> but my goals are relatively modest. These three provinces are primary. These two provinces are secondary goals, and humiliates the tertiary goal if everything goes according to plan and they just roll up like a rug. This is what it concerns me. Uh, Ottomans can be a big problem if they attack me. We're approximately even in actual military strength, but you'll see there are two tech levels ahead of me. Though so that's going to close to one tech level. But all these tech levels include tactics modifiers until level 8. They're going to have artillery that I don't have. An attack by the Ottomans right now would be really bad. So I've been looking at possible ways to prevent that. Hungary stopped liking me. Oh, because now we're competing great powers. Hungary, you consider yourself a great power? Don't flatter yourself. Uh, Serbia is probably not going to make enough of a difference. Crimea. Crimea River. You're... You have potential. I don't quite feel like signing up with you right now. But you stand serious potential... Ooh. Hello, Poland. Enemy of my enemy. You wouldn't by chance... No. They wouldn't. But... Seriously, an alliance with Poland would contain the Ottomans so much. I'm willing to put a diplomat toward that goal. Because the enemy of my enemy modifier here is big enough that it might? I really should have checked earlier who their rivals were. Mamelukes, Timurids, Venice. But the rival by Poland, Venice, Golden Horde, Mamelukes. What the heck, Christian Eastern Europe? You're really slacking on the containing the Ottomans. And if they beat me up, they're coming for you. Anyway, I'm going to turn down speed. And I'm going to get ready to prosecute this war against the Timurids and hope the Ottomans don't stab me in the back, at least until I have a chance to win this, or peace out of this, or secure the alliance with Poland. So that's the plan we're going with right now. Light and war against the Timurids evade fighting as many of their rebels for them as I can, and see if I can peace out with an advantageous peace. Primary goal, secondary, tertiary, humiliate. Alright, that's the plan for today. And I've spent five minutes just talking about the plan. I might as well unstop the clock and declare war. The only one province is... What did I actually declare as the Oracle? Crap. Basara? No. It's not that big a deal. Move into Basara, and then... Move in to take the fort. I really should have looked to see which one would I made the Oracle, because it would have been easiest to probably make it, uh... Grain here. As it's not under any fort overlap. I could have just grabbed it and held it. Ooh, trading coffee. That's a small, nice little thing. 
Alright, so I really don't want to fight the Rebels if I can help it, but it looks like I can't help it. At least their commander sucks. This is only... Yeah, this is Strylands. It should be able to engage there without too much difficulty. I am crossing a river. Alright, that wasn't too bad. We'll pull some of the units back to reinforce. And we'll grab the tech level. Because that tactics advantage will be very useful. Having just burned about a lot of manpower, I'm like, hey, Poland, Poland, you sure you don't want the alliance? Oh, I'm in an active war. Haha! <laughs> My bad. And they've actually gone down. Really? You've lost the enemy of my enemy? You changed your right. Poland, Poland, Poland. Poland, Poland, Poland. Alright, let's grab the superior unit type. I don't think I'm going to be actively engaging the enemy at the moment. And I took over their siege. That's a small, nice little thing. Taking over their siege means I can just jump right... There we go. That's actually fairly quick. Um... I will have you sort of grab some of these nearby provinces that they don't control. Like, they don't have an fortive zone to control. How are things going down here? Well, badly. Please, please, please peace out, Hijaz. You have no business fighting this war. Rebels. Our regional nobles challenge the Mamelukes. I th I'm, th in all honesty, for the time being, I'm willing to let one province have 20 years of reduced in uh, income. Hell, I'm even going to give it extra autonomy. I don't care about anything coming from that province, as long as it doesn't actively hurt me by having rebels and stuff. So I'm going to go and now siege this fort here. Because apparently, waste is under that fort's control. And then I'll move in and siege waste. So far, so good. Now, I need at least 10 war score to demand peace, so that's going to have to wait at least a little while longer. And where are the other forts? Okay, so as long as I keep this one under my control, I can take a whole bunch of this immediate land without the forts recapturing it. This is the rebels I didn't want to fight. Well, at least the battle went well. And now you see all the weirdness of moving around within a fort zone of control. And fort zones count a lot more for peace deals. Just that's one thing I've noticed. Fort zones count a lot more for peace deals. So if I can capture a couple of fort zones, that'll make a big difference when it comes to the peace table. Alright. I'm liking the look of this. I don't quite have that 10% war score yet, but we now control... The war goal. We haven't actually brought the auto, the uh, Timurads to battle yet. Well, that's, yeah, that's the weirdness of moving through fort zones. Um, why are you having to move that way? Because this is, isn't it a fort zone. But apparently, because this is a fort zone, I'd have to move all the way through the uncontested fort. Z this one's occupied by rebels. Yep. In order to get to here. Wow, their rebels are just smashing themselves against my sieging forces. Alright. Um, I'll take that and occupy some more territory. No, I, looks like my vassal's gonna get it. I don't trust them again. I could distract it, though. Well, probably do. Don't have any guys with siege, do I? No. And I don't have access to cannons until the next tech level. 
I'm not going to start any versions until I'm confident that I'm not going to have a third front opening in this war. They're fighting Venice. They're in another war against someone other than me. Alright, well, that makes me a bit more confident. Though, the way things are going in Ethiopia is not thrilling. I might pull one unit back to prevent a raid from Ethiopia. Because it looks like we're pretty set over here. I gotta wait for this siege to go. And once that goes, I want to pull you back. I don't want you getting attacked if I can help it. So what's the... This is mountains. So if I can provoke them to attack me here in this siege, and then move men in to reinforce, that's ideal, almost. Yeah, come on, no guy. You know you want to. No, no, nope, they're going to deal with rebels, it looks like. Aww. Aww. Yeah. Iran is mostly mountains, so offensives in Iran are really tricky. But it also means it's really hard to drive you out of territory that you've taken. Alright. And notice this gap in their fort zones here? That's a lot of just open territory that I can now march into and start grabbing for uh, war score. Looks like no guy lost the rules. Alright, general died. Time to get a new one. You're crap. Let's try another one. You're better. I don't like spending that many military points when I'm so far behind a military because of this fucker. Die already so your less awful air can take control. It's like Ethiopia's pulled back for the time being. And was it? My vassal, my Arabian vassal, is actually doing a fairly good job of gobbling up all this unforted territory down here. Gold star. You're, you're, you get a gold star as vassal of the year right now. Oh, there's no guy. What's the... This is dry lands. I don't really have too much problem engaging them in dry lands. But first, let's just see what I can get. Is it need, Do I need to engage them? I can meet my primary goal. Well, if the Ottomans engaged in another war, why not go for more? The whole kit and caboodle... is 73 war score, and I'm currently 152 uh, willingness away from that. And basically it depends on how other wars go. If Ottomans attack me, or if, you know, major offensives from Ethiopia... Ooh, that's a decent-sized Ethiopian offensive. Rather not front that head on without my allies. They're going to Dengola, and they're going to be there on April 3rd. I'm going to wait until they're locked in. Yes, I know it's annoying having two different wars going on at the same time. Other things have been going on. Alright, they're locked in. Go reinforce Dengola. Now get my attention back to here. Okay, they're in Baghdad. Baghdad is dry lands. There is no river between these two provinces. So I'm going to move up both my armies, group them together, and then attack into Baghdad. I'll have numerical superiority. I'll have about equal generalship. And I shouldn't have terrain disadvantage. Statistically, I should win the fight. Now the question is, well, I went up before these Timurids managed to make it all the way across the country to get there. Ooh, we lost Dengola. We hurt them more than we lost. No, we took more than we hurt them. Damn. They just had... What did they have? 
Looks like they brought in even more reinforcements. That's inconvenient. But losing War Square without losing land at the moment actually kind of is nice because it might mean that Jaws is willing to accept some peace. Meanwhile, this battle's going fairly well despite us occasionally rolling zeros. At least they were on the fire phase. And you're going to go recapture Mosul. Come on, Timrods. You know this is going badly for you now. Still 150 way. It's this difficulty of moving through... Oh, that's actually a fort. How did they ca They captured that fort quickly. Damn. Alright, if I'm going for the whole kit and caboodle, I need to capture at least one more fort. Uh, Yazid sort of controls all of central Iran. All of Persia. And controlling that fort will give me a decent-sized front to work with. It'll put all of this behind in my territory. And, you know, give me the war score bonus of another good fort-controlled province. Yeah, I'm using a lot of war scores by having Masul controlled. Notice how most provinces are worth like 0.2, where a war uh, fort province is 5.2. Forts make a big deal to war score. Alright, I've improved everything I can with Poland. Are you willing to accept an alliance with me? No, even if I wasn't at war. Please make Ottomans your rival again. That was very convenient for me. Oh, can I afford this? I want the piety. I think the morale loss from loss of prestige might actually be a bigger risk right now than the cash loss from gaining prestige uh, from piety. Also because morale bonuses from piety. So I'm going to move into these. It's another... As long as they don't have any troops there. I'll just keep an eye on that. It's another fort province. Another fort. It's a fort province. It's a mountain province. I have good generalship, or at least competent generalship. I have good morale. I should probably be able to hold. Uh, the enemy hardly has any troops. No, guy, really, you're bringing, like, more than half the firepower here. Not quite willing to just go away. It's inconvenient. I'm gradually taking Masul back. That's going to give us some more war score. Ethiopia is sitting back and, I don't know, recovering its men? No, it's taking attrition, so it's really not recovering its men. If the AI wants to sit there and take attrition, I'm fine with it. No one else in my coalition is really out, you know, outfitted to deal with them right now. And they won't just white piece me out yet. Yet. A couple more years and they'll probably do it. Hey, hello, no guy. Where are you going? I'm actually going to move you up here in case they're going after this province. So my vassal here will hopefully reinforce me if that's the case. Not that his general will make that big a difference. No, they're parking themselves there. Which is mountains, which is inconvenient. Blast. Yeah, no guy is bringing the bulk of Timrod's fighting power at the moment. If anything's going to force me to peace out earlier, it's going to be them. And we are reaching where I consider a critical level of manpower where I might want to just peace out in general. I might just give up on the humiliation. I'm going to gain some power projection from this anyway. Mm, let's see, can I peace no guy out? No. No guy will not peace out. I'm not going to take this fort before they take that one. I really don't feel like throwing men at them right now. Ooh, finally get access to idea groups. You 
Ethiopia is starting to white piece out minor powers in the war. Hey, will you white piece me out? Oh, you will. Thank you, Ethiopia. All right, well, Sewell's ours. Now I have. Now that I'm out peace with Ethiopia, it's a big decision. Is the Ottomans are still at war? They're winning the war, however. Is it like a war for Naxon or something? It's, uh, yeah, it's a war for some Aegean islands. I have to make a big decision. Do I commit the manpower to engage Nogai in the mountains here? I think the Persian separatists running rampant are also an issue at this point. Like, I'm gonna have to fight Timurid's rebels for them. If I drop the Humiliate, they'll accept. I could even get a little bit of, well, not much war indemnity, but a little bit of war indemnity out of it. It'll cost me 20... Oh, wait a second. Damn, I'm gonna transfer that to you. Bugger. All right, I guess I do have to fight them just so I can transfer it. I mean, I technically could sell it, but selling provinces gives my minus uh, prestige in this version. I figured I found that out. So if I can just beat No Guy's army, oh, I don't want you to go through there. Yeah, beat No Guy's army, which I should be able to do. Two to one odds, more cavalry. Yeah. All right. Transfer control. Sure, I'll give you a little cherry access. Let you die. I'll let you die in the foreign war more easily. All right. I think this is a good time to peace out. My three goals: two provinces to my vassal. I get war reparations and a little bit of gold. Could maybe min max, but no, that's gonna cost double points, and I really don't need it. No, they're not gonna give me that. Yeah, this is good enough. I'm down to like the 10,000 manpower that I'm like, this is my point to cut and run so that I don't have a uh, sudden war with the Ottomans screwing me over. And peace! Oh, yeah, I just leveled up my. That's me being careless. Right, let's give autonomy to the Shia regions. When troops arrive and... Uh -huh. Leave back to just maintain order. When troops arrive and once overextension of war or exhaustion is over, you should be content. This is actually looking pretty good now. Whew. After spending five long-winded minutes... Five long-winded minutes just talking about how... what my goals were... I think that war went pretty well. And I've got my nice Kurdish horde here for backup. Uh, Hassa's next on the list. They're aligned with Oman and Tiberistan. Oman is also on the hit list. Shot. You're Sunni, but I'm allied to your rival in Hejaz, which means you're probably not going to Diplo Vassal. So, Hassa's next on the list. They're Shia. They have only minimal allies to Baristan, Oman. Once my manpower is recovered, Hasla's next hit. So let's start fabricating claims on them. They would accept diplo vassalization if I could actually get their uh, reputation, if I get my opinion high enough, but that's not going to happen. Heretic religion, aggressive expansion once provinces, has caused belly, yada yada, yeah. It's not gonna happen. So 
As soon as these come up, start making them cores. Should have saved some uh, diplo piling administrative power for it. But that gives me access to my first idea group. Now, there's two big choices as far as I see it here. Trade or influence. Influence is a lot of good things. Fabricate claim time, thematicization cost, less aggressive expansion, uh, relations, reputation, vassal contributions. Okay, some of those aren't as big as others. But really, influence is a lot of good ideas. And we're going to make a lot of money from trade. It's something we're going to want at some point. Though, I don't like building ships without shipyards, because they take so long. I think I'm going to grab the diplomatic tech, rather than immediately saving, spending everything in an idea, and I'm going to grab influence, and we will be doing influence. Now, lost trading and coffee, sad pandas. So things aren't looking too bad. We're recovering manpower, we're making money. I can cut our military budget, I don't think we're having any imminent rebellions. We are uh, fabricating on Hassa, I can raise the speed. Uh, fabricating on Hassa, they're our next target. They only have minimal allies. Uh, Timurads are completely falling apart. We, The damage we did to them was probably the last nail in the coffin. That's going to allow us to potentially grab other provinces. Sale of titles. Let's bring ourselves up to three stability. It'll help with our conversions, too. If I were to start converting some of you guys, would you be getting... No, you're, you're stable enough I could probably convert you without getting rebellions. Just to get my religious unity up a little bit. Our missions available. Incorporate Shamshar and allow our manpower to recover. Personally speaking, I really like the bonuses right now for letting your manpower to recover. Ten years of increased tax and lower unrest? It's pretty good. And while I definitely will be incorporating Shamshar, it's not an immediate concern. So let's start letting our manpower recover, and I'll probably declare the next war as soon as that. Uh, mission triggers. Why am I waiting so long on these wars? Well, because the threat of an Ottoman invasion is ever-present. Oh, they're actually getting some damage done to them. But the threat of an Ottoman invasion is ever-present, and I want to have a reserve of manpower that is quite considerable in case the Ottomans attack. And they're likely continuing to expand their forces. They're up now, yeah, they're up to 42,000 from the 38 they were last time I looked. And we're still sitting at our 36. And their manpower is larger than ours, their force limit's larger than ours. They have artillery now. Not very good for us. Because as I've said before, we can match the quality of more Western armies but we have to rely on cavalry to do it. And we're allowed a larger uh, ratio of cavalry uh, than Western armies, which allows us to put a lot of cavalry in to make that ratio work for us, or make our superior cavalry work for us. But that doesn't change the fact that cavalry is expensive, which is always going to be a drain on our economy. Maintaining these large cavalry forces is going to put a drain on us. I kind of do want to annex you. I mean, I don't have, it'll piss off. They changed once again the costs for annexing vassals. It's no longer a reputation hit, it's just a relation with all vassal hit, as far as I can tell. But overall, the cost of annexing vassals has gone up in terms of diplo points, so it actually will take a lot more. I mean, I don't have the double points to spare at the moment. Probably just going on just a standard conquest stomp. Let's take a look at what we actually need for Arabia. 
Let's see where those are. Madonna is here. Is that Medina? That was typically pronounced in you know English, so it probably is Medina. Oh yeah, and here's my uh, Mecca, but it's got a slightly different pronunciation. All right. So we need Medina and Mecca. Those are right there. We don't care about that war. We need Adon, just down here. We need Cadiff. Not sure where that is. Because we apparently don't own it yet. Oh, that's what we're fabricating on right now. All right, excellent. So Adon, Cadiff. Taking some time just trying to find these, so where's... You know, there is a search function. I can just use that rather than... I was trying to kind of testing my geography skill. Sanaa. Oh, also down there, right under my nose the whole time. A lot of... Alright, I'm not going to worry too much about trying to find all these provinces at the moment. Disagreeing advisor. I'll loot, I'll pay prestige for points straight up. It's a worthwhile trade in my opinion. Prestige exists to be spent for the most part. You want to keep it positive cuz the benefits are nice, but it's really when you start looking at penalties that it's bad for you. But in most cases because it decays anyway, it's pretty much just worth it to spend it to get more permanent bonuses like power and the like. Man, it's taking us for... I really want you to die. You're 46 years old. Keel over. Give us somebody competent for once. I've put you into battle in hopes that you will die, but you stubbornly hang on. Right, we, the only missionary advisor at the moment at the mo is super expensive. We can't afford that. Not even for a short term get a few conversions done. If he was tier 2, I might think about it, but tier 3, no way. So, we're waiting for these to get done, prove our... I'm just going to do just a little bit. Oh, I still have some areas to core, don't I? Let's get that going. Yeah, don't want to have that hanging around. It's just costing us unrest for no good reason. Alright. Man, I'm just watching up. You know, Timurides get torn apart by Persian rebels. I'd much rather have Persia as a neighbor than Timurides. Partly because, hell, it's pious to declare war on Shia. So I'm not going to lose any piety doing that. Though they are likely to become a much more powerful ally to Hassan in the meantime keep an eye on Ottomans and their rivals. They're at peace now. Castile. And France. I don't think France will make me an ally, will they? Competing great power. Yeah, way, way away. Way further than Poland was. Poland is still closer. Oh, and it's too many diplomatic relations. I actually didn't know that could happen to the AI. I thought the AI always kept one slot open for the player. I, th I thought that's the way it worked. They have the lesser union. Yeah. Oh, they probably picked up... Yep. It's from their vassalization of the Teutonic Knights. It probably has put them at their limit. But I, as I understood it in earlier versions at least, the AI always maintained its last diplomatic slot for the possibility of alliances or diplomatic marriages with the player. 
So that's something slightly new. In the culture map here, an Azure Byzani vassal wouldn't be bad either. Oh. Persian Separatists? Persia, this isn't your land. This is Kurdish. Okay, yes, I know it's technically part of the Persian cores, but still. Right, I'm gonna raise military spending and go help my vassal deal with these Persian Separatists. That's in the mountains, though. Um, can we wait for them to move? They, at least, they have a general. I really don't want to attack those Separatists in the mountains. I really don't. I really, really, really don't. And let's face it, if we lose one province of our vassals, or even two. Ooh. You know, we're actually good on administrative benefits at the moment. Let's get the military ones. Extra tradition, extra military power. Get us that tech faster. There they go. Get out, get out of here. I'll move in to help you siege. Now, Persian Separatists, you're actually... You're screwing this up big time. If you'd stayed and fought the Timurids rather than crossing into my territory... The Timurids are actually kind of pulling their shit together right now. I'm not sure how long this will last. But at the moment, they don't have a whole lot of occupied territory. Just a little pretender rebels up here, it looks like. Oh, not even that's gone. Man, I really thought I'd broken them with thy war, and that the rebels were going to finish them. But they're holding together better than I usually see them do. I mean, there's still plenty of time for them to break up. I have a mediocre king, and a really... It's, it's the potential of getting that uh, weak claim young king coming up next that might really break them. That might be good for me. Manpower's almost full again, and I'm looking at the clock, we're almost done. I'm hoping that manpower will fill up before the end here. That was a really exciting start to the episode with that war going against Timurods. And it's sort of tapered off here at the end. Taking a second to catch our breath. And the next war is not going to be nearly as exciting. It's it's probably going to just be stomping the hell out of Hassa. Well, Oman cries. Plague in Cairo. Have we had a plague in Cairo? And it's like this is recovering from plague. Oh. It's just a negative event, I guess, considering Cairo is perfectly stable. And the loss of manpower and tax from our largest province is going to be, or at least most developed province, is going to be inconvenient. We can also start looking at buildings. We've got enough cash reserves put together that I can now start thinking about spending money on buildings. I want to keep at least 500 around as sort of a war chest for paying for armies and mercenaries in the event of an Ottoman invasion. But we can, oh, we already have some there. Already have some there. Where else are we pulling from? Ethiopia. We don't have any control over Ethiopia yet. I might move to pulling from somewhere else. So we don't actually have control over Ethiopian trade note yet. Uh, yeah, it might be worth it to pull from Basara instead of Ethiopia. Which means it might be worth building trade parts here. No, 
I don't want you collecting there. I want you transferring trade power. There we go. Yeah, that's moving significantly more income to Alexandria. Still don't have a really great control over the Alexandrian trade node. It's passable, but it's not the best. And that finishes up our manpower recovery. Uh, we don't have a mission to go attack them, but we're going to do it anyway. That looks like a good place to call it for the day. Alright, most successful. This is Deckard 6, signing off.